just a couple hours ago, yeah. we received a, just an unbelievably marvelous text, video, and pictures from our friends in the Israeli yes. government of young people, young families, yes. miracle people landing, getting on the plane in Kazakhstan yes. and landing on the tarmac yes. of of Israel at uh, Ben Gurion in Tel Aviv and and I hope they can show this right now yeah. showing signs thanking you yes, the, look, yes. think about this because thanking you. you for being a fulfillment yeah. of Bible prophecy Amen. and I'm going to teach you today about the connection between Moses yeah the blessing of God on Moses and you and I today. Amen. And you know, Tiz, most of us know that song, we are standing Ooh, on yeah, holy yeah. ground. Mm. Think about that. How many times have we Ooh. sang, we are standing on holy ground. I'm going to show you today what that means. Awesome. And the reason awesome. why you are watching right now, it's not a coincidence. Nope. God is about to move you. Amen. From your circumstances yes, yes. onto prophetic Amen. holy ground. This is going to yeah. be a great program. We'll be right back. We're Pastors Larry and Tiz Huck. We want to welcome you to our YouTube channel and invite you to subscribe and be a member of all the resources that we make available to you. You know, just as we took that break, you know, I, 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 not that it matters, but we don't use a teleprompter or anything. <laughs> we just we just trust the Holy Spirit will teach us and and lead us. And we get so excited because w w you and I, because of you, we get to be Amen. part of what God yeah. is doing prophetically yes. concerning standing with the nation of Amen. Israel and, and, and being able to, all of us together, yes. fulfill Genesis yes. 12. Yes. I will bless those Amen. who bless you, yes. Israel. And so when we went to a break, and we were getting ready to come back. Man, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. I want to teach you a, a little bit more, a series, Tiz, that yeah. I just did here in our church at New Beginnings. And this is, uh, you can go to our website. I, I hope you stream with us on Sunday mornings because yes. we get to take time and yeah. teach in depth the Amen. Jewish roots of our faith. But I just did, uh, I think it was three weeks teaching yeah. that God opened yeah. my heart up to Moses yeah. and so read it good. in the Hebrew language, studied it in the Hebrew language and saw things that I had never seen before. Yeah. And little did I know it was a prophetic message, Amen. not just to the church, but to all of us yes. right now yep. on where Absolutely. we are. And, and uh, one of the things I want to show you is that when God said to Moses, take off your shoes Ooh. because where you are standing is holy ground. And yeah. I want to teach that just as we we're coming back, I have the picture of the videos of those young people and those young families oh. getting off of that plane and stepping onto the land Ooh. of Israel <laughs> on holy ground, wow. the land where our Messiah came from, wow. the land where our Messiah will Amen. return to Amen. and gather us all together. Ooh. And how many people, wow. because of understanding tis the open windows Amen. of heaven, yes. you're a part, and, and yes, I'm going to show you, you, when you're Thank a part you. of this, you are standing on holy ground. Yeah. What an amazing open windows of heaven oh, period boy, we kidding. are in right now. Oh, it's so powerful and so timely. 
And I know we're so excited about so much more teaching, but Larry, you need to go back and just kind of explain quickly what the first fruits are, the open windows of heaven. What is all that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I want to get into the thing of Moses. Okay. Uh, they, 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 before we came on, they said, Tiz, remind Larry to do this. <laughs> okay. The Bible says in Malachi, Malachi is when the, the Jews have just come out of Babylonian captivity. That's where Malachi comes in. They're meeting in Jerusalem. It's called right. in, in, uh, in Hebrew history, it's called the, the Great Assembly. And all the prophets and all the sages, they're all meeting together and they're saying, the enemy, every time we're doing good, we mess up, the enemy mm. comes in and destroys us. What mm. do we need to do? Mm. God tells them, this is Malachi. Return on the meat, Teshuvah. That's what the month of Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles is all yeah. about. It is the time of return. Uh -huh. And if you return, they said, well, how do we return? God says, in your tithes and your offerings. Yeah. The tithe, we know what the tithe is. The offering is three times a year you come before the Lord yeah. and you don't come empty-handed. Yeah. Passover, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. If you return... I will open up the windows of heaven yeah. and I will pour you out such a blessing. Amen. That's the latter rain. Yeah. And then it says, I will rebuke the devourer. Yeah. Now, right now we are in a 30 day grace period. And that yes. comes from the understanding that they went to Moses and said, we missed this offering. What do we do? He said, let me ask God. And God said, give a 30 day right? grace period. Why? Because as you say all the time, God is not trying to get something from, from us. us. He's trying to get something to, to us. us. That's why we blow the shofar. We yeah. sound the alarm. God is about to open Amen. the windows of heaven. Yeah. And I believe this year yeah. is going to be the greatest year ever. Yes. And, and, and let me say this. If we miss this and we have about a week or a week and a half yeah. till that window closes, mm. this is the grace period. If we miss it, it's gone yeah. forever, yeah. okay? So here's the reality of what God showed us in this, and I need to say this quickly. Moses is 80 years old, and he's tending Jethro's sheep, his father-in-law's sheep, and he's up in the mountains, he's out in the wilderness, he's got a family, he's got kids, life is good, nobody's chasing him, <laughs> nobody's wanting to kill him, yeah. and he sees a bush that is burning or uh, has a fire in it but it's not consumed yeah Moses sees the bush and please go to our website get the teaching the Bible says Moses sees the bush yeah but then the Bible says he turns aside to see right well if this. he already saw yeah why does the Bible say he yeah. turns aside to see Every letter, that's why Jesus yeah. said, don't remove one jot, jot. or one yod yep. or one tittle because yeah. in the five books of Moses, every letter, yeah. every word has a deep meaning. Yeah. So Moses sees the burning bush, yes. but that word to see means with physical eyes. Yeah. How many of us are seeing what's happening? Seeing the um, COVID Passport, you know, the Bible says the mark of the beast. They won't be able to buy or sell. Sees as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Sees our government doing things. Sees all these things that's going on yeah. around the world. We see it. Yeah. But are we seeing are we what really God seeing is yeah. doing? Now watch this. So Moses turns aside to see, mm. the same word to see, the burning bush, vayar, but it has a yod. Right. To see with the physical eyes has no yod. To see, when Moses turned aside to see, it has a yod. It means he turned aside mm. to see what God is yes. saying. You're yes, watching yes. right now Ooh, because that. you need to see yeah. what God is saying Amen. and what God is doing. Now yes. watch this. The moment he turned aside to see, yeah. the Bible then says God saw yeah. Moses turn aside. Amen. When God saw yeah. Moses turn aside, yeah. he said, Moses, Moses. Mm. Now, unless, you under, unless we understand the Jewish roots of our faith, we just think, well, God said, Moses, Moses. Right. But in Hebrew, every time God says a name twice, twice. it means that God is lifting us Amen. up to another level. Yeah, yeah. Abraham, Abraham, Amen. Jacob, Jacob. Yeah. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and we could go on and on. Yeah. Samuel, Samuel, about to turn from a normal young man yes. to a prophet. What that means is when yeah. we turn aside, yeah. 
Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about where you're going to live. But seek ye first. Turn aside. Jesus said, they have eyes, but they don't see. Right. Blessed are you who have eyes to see. Amen. By your are yes. to see what God yes. is doing. Amen. We see everything that's going around mm. about us. Yeah. But we need to see yeah. that God is saying in these last days, I will. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, yes. Jehovah Sitkanu, yes. Jehovah Mekedes, Jehovah Shalom. Amen. I will bless those yeah. who bless, bless the nation yes. of Israel. Amen. So when when Moses turned aside, yeah. immediately when mm. you and I turn aside, when we when we turn aside yeah. to bless these young families, yeah. this morning not only did we see the young people getting off that plane, right? I mean, it's happening. As we're sitting here, it's happening. They're going in and going in the airport right now. <laughs> but they also told us there's another country. You know, when they told us about this country yeah. eight months ago, we weren't allowed to say what country it was. Yeah. They told us our friends in the Israeli government said there's another country. Yeah. So you're watching right now because God wants you right now yeah. in these last 10 days Ooh. of first fruits. Yep. God wants you to turn aside yeah. to, to be a part. It, it literally says in Hebrew, Moses wanted to get closer Oof. to the fire, Amen. closer yep. to the anointing. Yep. When we come back, I'm going to show you that when you get closer to yep. the anointing, when you get in the will of God, mm. the thorn, the bush represents the thorn. The yeah. thorn is the curse. Yep. Remind me, I got to teach yep. that. Yep. The thorns are the curse. No matter yeah. what curses are going on around us, mm. the fire of God, the Amen. anointing of God, yeah. the presence of God, yes. we may be in this world, yep. but, but we, are, we not are not of, of this, this world. world. Folks, Amen. you need to turn aside and be a part of this yeah. because this next year, Amen. I mean, the world's crazy, but this next year is going to be amazing and God wants you to be a part of it. Yes. Now, let me say this real quick. We have several gifts mm. For all of you that are going to turn aside yeah. <laughs> and get close to these the fire, are really special. this every one of these so is special. is called the Shema. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Shema is, uh, you know, uh, originally it's out of Deuteronomy six, right. four through nine. Right. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, yes. Adonai Echad. Yeah. Hero Israel. Amen. Hero Israel, the Lord, yes. he is our, our God, God, and the Lord, he He's is one. One God, that's but, right. But, you know, when we come back, we're going to talk about Moses said, what do I have to do with that? Yeah. A lot of Christians think that. Yeah. But Jesus quoted this Shema yes. himself. Yeah, in Mark 12, 29. Mark 12. He prayed it right there. Yeah. So. When, when, the, when the Pharisees came to Jesus. Yeah. And they said, what is the greatest of all the commandments? What did Jesus say? He said, Shema mm. Israel yeah. Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. And he didn't say it in Latin, and he didn't say it in Greek, and he didn't say it in a Texas draw. He said it in Hebrew. And Amen. then what did he say? This next commandment is equal to that. Yeah. That you are to love your neighbor. <laughs> As you love yourself. Ooh. You know you know that? I mean, it, everything Jesus quoted. This is why we yeah. teach in the Jewish roots. Yeah. Everything Jesus quoted came from the Torah. Exactly. It came from the Torah. Yeah. He's quoting the teachings of the yes. word of the Lord. When we understand that, we get revelation. Yeah. A rabbi told me when I asked him, I said, why do we say the Shema? Yeah. Now, I say it in the morning. Yep. I say it during the day, but I say the last thing when I go to bed at night, when I lay my head down before God, I wear it on my ring every day. I wear it on my ring. So I look at it and the rabbi said, when you, when you say the Shema, hear O Israel, hear Mm. world, hear the world, the Lord, he is my God. And the Lord, he is one. He is the only God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when you remind your, you are, yep. you are, you are speaking it. this over your home, you're yep. establishing, yep. but your soul yeah. is connecting Amen. with the spirit of yes. God. Your it's a, it's a rededication Amen. of your soul. Anyway, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about Moses and we're going to talk about you when you yeah. turn aside. Yep. The curse may be all around you. But greater is he, the anointing of God, than anything you're going to face this year. We'll be right back.
Did you know that your first fruits offering during this season of Sukkot is one of the most important offerings you can sow? This is when God promises to open the windows of heaven over your life with an outpouring of spiritual and financial blessing. But as you're learning, we're in a 30-day grace period that will end soon. So we encourage you to take a step of faith and let us hear from you today. Your first fruits offering, whether large or small, does more than bring a great blessing into your life. It will bring a great blessing to Israel and the Jewish people through Project Aliyah. You'll be helping to support these godly teenagers who have chosen to leave their homes in Kazakhstan to start a new life in Israel. You'll also be helping assist many other Jews desperate to escape the hate and anti-Semitism that's sweeping the world. I'm here on the tarmac at Ben Gurion Airport in Israel. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to receive a plane full of over 100 new Olim, new immigrants that are moving to Israel from Kazakhstan. We've worked together with your generous help for over a year to make this happen. And finally, this dream is coming true. We are truly witnessing the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So thank you so much on behalf of myself, the government of Israel, for all of Karen Ayesod. Thank you, Pastor Larry, and thank all of you. God bless you. As you sow your first fruits offering of any size to help with Project Aliyah, we want to bless you with this unique Shema Mezuzah. It's embossed with this important biblical prayer in both Hebrew and English. God gave His people the mezuzah to be a symbol of faith and a daily reminder of His protection and promises over your home. As you sow your offering of $135 or more, we want to say thank you by adding this wonderful Shema necklace and chain. What makes this pendant so unique is that it's designed using all Hebrew letters. It's a display of your desire to be a blessing to Israel and your commitment to love the Lord with all your heart and soul. To show our appreciation for supporting Project Aliyah with a first fruits offering of $500 or more, we will add this impressive Shema metallic artwork. It's a stunning reproduction by artist Patrick Newworth and made exclusively for our ministry friends and partners. What a statement of your faith in the one true God and what a symbol of your love for Israel. To get involved and to be a blessing, simply dial our toll-free number at 800-978-8546 and speak with one of our helpful operators. You can also choose to visit our secure website at LarryHuck.tv, where you can contribute and select your Shema thank you gifts. Or you can always mail your offering to the address on the screen. But the fastest way to be a blessing is to contact the ministry at 800-978-8546. We assure you that your first fruits offering is like putting good seed into good soil. Why? Because it's going toward one of the greatest charitable and prophetic projects you could ever take part in, Project Aliyah. And as you bless these Jewish people, you are indeed blessing Israel, for which God promises to bless you in return. Remember though, we're in God's 30-day grace period, which ends soon. So please let us hear from you before this window of blessing passes by. We sincerely thank you today for standing with us as we stand with Israel. Now let's rejoin Pastors Larry and Tiz. You know, this is an amazing time that we're living in. A yeah. Bible prophecy yes. is shouting from the rooftops, yeah. the blowing of the shofar, the sound, sounding of the alarm. Why? Yes. Because God does not want yes. us to miss. He doesn't want us to miss the blessing. Amen. That's why he gives us three times a year you come before the Lord. This is where Jesus Jesus didn't just say, uh, you know, when, when you bless someone else, I'll bless you, I don't know, 30, 60, 100 fold. <laughs> it's Passover, it's Pentecost, it's Feast right. of Tabernacles. And right now we're in that grace period. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about Moses turning aside. I want to yeah. talk yeah. about the burning bush. I want to talk about standing on holy ground. But before we do that, I want you to say again, I think you said it in the back or maybe you said it in one of the programs, is that when... God speaks to Moses and says, here's what I want you to do. Yeah. Moses was 80 years old. Yeah. Moses is married. He yeah. has children. He's saying, and, and he says, who am I that I should go? And right. part of the teaching is 
It's an, a, an act of humility. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says in, in, in Exodus, it says Moses was the most humble man on the face of the earth. <laughs> and it's amazing because Moses wrote that. But humility in Hebrew doesn't mean the same thing. Right. It means I'm the least likely. Yeah. And so he did. He was slow of speech and everything. But ancient Jewish wisdom points out something. He said, why should I go? Yeah. What I'm comfortable, I'm old, I'm. what do right. I have to do with them? Right. I wasn't raised Hebrew. Yeah. And just think if he hadn't responded where the world would be, and you look Ooh. at these young people landing in Israel, oh, what if we hadn't responded? It's, yeah. tis, it's the only plane that's getting out of uh, Kazakhstan, yeah, yeah. and who knows if... Yeah. The, everything would have come in place had we not eight months ago when we couldn't yeah. even say the name of the country, yeah. had we not responded. Yeah. This is why when God calls yeah. us, we need to turn aside. Yeah, yeah. It may not be convenient, but right. turn aside. Right. Well, you know, Larry, I, I was so moved by this teaching because, you know, we've been in the ministry since mid-70s. <laughs> yeah, when you were two and yeah, I was yeah. six. I was a wee infant. But... Um, you know, that's kind of how we based our life, really, was just, Lord, we're here for you. What do you want us to do? And it never was convenient or it never was self-serving, just like with Moses saying, hey, I'm comfortable here, Yeah. you know, but you never know what's on the other side of your yes. Yeah, very good. And so I think that we're in a position today where God has been able to entrust us with this message and with lives, because we've said yes every time. How did you say that uh, when, whenever yeah. we were uh, between your? How so do you say some. That? Everybody most wants people, to do something. Everybody wants to do something. Everybody, I believe, has God in their heart and wants to do something to change the world or affect people. But there's an old saying: somewhere between what we can and can't do, we do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we can't take it all, all on ourselves. No one person can change the entire world. But together, we can change the world. And with Moses saying yes to God without really knowing what he was saying yes to, yeah. I feel like you know each one of us is in that same position, maybe not with that calling that Moses had, but with what God's telling us to do right now. We're not just spectators in the end times. We're participants. And we are a vital part, you, us, to what God is doing in the world today. And with Moses, it was like, what have I to do with thee? You know, and probably every decision we've ever made, that was there. Yeah. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. We're going where? You know, when we were comfortable or we'd just gotten settled finally. And saying yes, whether it's to, to this offering, to telling your neighbor about the Lord, saying yes has far ripple effects, like throwing a, a pebble in a pond. Absolutely. So we can do something great. And we want to thank you for being a part of making these things happen. Yeah. Because it's not just us, it's y'all with us. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'll finish the teaching on Moses tomorrow, but what you're saying is so vitally important that, God doesn't explain, okay, get out of the boat and walk on water, yeah. and I'll explain to you how you're going to walk on water. He just says, get out of the boat. Yeah. When Moses turned aside, yeah. when he turned aside, mm. God saw him. Amen. And I'm wondering what, you know, and the, 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 the bush in Hebrew is a thorn bush. Yeah. I wonder what, and you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden when yeah. God cursed the land with thorns and thistles. The, the thorn is a, a, a symbol of the enemy yeah. coming against you. Yeah. What enemy is coming against you? When you turn aside, when yeah. you turn aside, Amen. God sees you yes, turn he aside. Does. He's waiting yes. right now. Think about this. We yeah. have maybe a week or 10 days, depending when you're watching this, the window is ready to be opened mm. over you. Financially, Amen. marriage, home, family, children, Help. miracle <laughs> healings. The window is getting ready to be opened over you. He's just waiting for you to turn aside. Mm. What if we hadn't turned aside for these kids that are landing at this very moment, kissing the holy ground of Israel, mm and their lives are changed yeah. forever. And now we've got another nation. 
when you turn aside yeah. right now, we will, we will, we have already said yeah. to Israel, we're going to help with this. <laughs> we're going to do this. We're going to partner with you. Yeah. When you turn aside, Amen. the windows of heaven yes. will open up Amen. over us, rebuke the devourer. Yeah. And where we stand, I got to teach this next week, <laughs> where you stand, where are you standing right now? Where do you stand? When you stand next Amen. to the fire, yes. next to the will of God, mm. wherever you are, Amen. God will stand with you. Remember what Moses said. He said, they're going to want to know who you are. Mm. And he said, you tell them, yeah. I am the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Amen. I will be whatever you need me to be, yes. whenever Amen. you need me to be it. Woo. What a mighty God we serve. Ooh, and you're yes, watching. Yes. It's time to turn aside Amen. and watch the favor of God on your lives. We got to go. I'm Pastor Larry. I'm we love God you guys. Bless you. God bless you. you. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Did you know that your First Fruits offering during this season of Sukkot is one of the most important offerings you can sow? This is when God promises to open the windows of heaven over your life with an outpouring of spiritual and financial blessing. But as you're learning, we're in a 30-day grace period that will end soon. So we encourage you to take a step of faith and let us hear from you today. Your First Fruits offering, whether large or small, does more than bring a great blessing into your life. It will bring a great blessing to Israel and the Jewish people through Project Aliyah. You'll be helping to support these godly teenagers who have chosen to leave their homes in Kazakhstan to start a new life in Israel. You'll also be helping assist many other Jews desperate to escape the hate and anti-Semitism that's sweeping the world. As you sow your first fruits offering of any size to help with Project Aliyah, we want to bless you with this unique Shema Mezuzah. It's embossed with this important biblical prayer in both Hebrew and English. God gave His people the Mezuzah to be a symbol of faith and a daily reminder of His protection and promises over your home. As you sow your offering of $135 or more, we want to say thank you by adding this wonderful Shema necklace and chain. What makes this pendant so unique is that it's designed using all Hebrew letters. It's a display of your desire to be a blessing to Israel and your commitment to love the Lord with all your heart and soul. To show our appreciation for supporting Project Aliyah with a First Fruits offering of $500 or more, we will add this impressive Shema metallic artwork. It's a stunning reproduction by artist Patrick Newworth and made exclusively for our ministry friends and partners. What a statement of your faith in the one true God and what a symbol of your love for Israel. To get involved and to be a blessing, simply dial our toll-free number at 800-978-8546 and speak with one of our helpful operators. You can also choose to visit our secure website at LarryHuck.tv, where you can contribute and select your Shema thank you gifts. Or you can always mail your offering to the address on the screen. But the fastest way to be a blessing is to contact the ministry at 800-978-8546. We assure you that your First Fruits offering is like putting good seed into good soil. Why? Because it's going toward one of the greatest charitable and prophetic projects you could ever take part in, Project Aliyah. And as you bless these Jewish people, you are indeed blessing Israel, for which God promises to bless you in return. Remember though, we're in God's 30-day grace period, which ends soon. So please let us hear from you before this window of blessing passes by. We sincerely thank you today for standing with us as we stand with Israel.